Hello and welcome to TV on TV. I'm State Representative Tommy Vitolo. You're watching Brookline Interactive Group. Today is Thursday, October 28th. And we've got a great show for you today. I'm going to start by saying happy birthday, Felice. My son is 11 years old today uh, and he's doing great. Uh, he's a fifth grader at Pierce. He's got his first cross country track meet today. Uh, he's going to do great and I'm, we're really proud of him. Uh, we start with the news and then we're going to go to an interview pre-recorded with John Harris. He is the co-chair of Climate Action Brookline. He's going to tell us all about what Climate Action Brookline has been up to uh, in the last 20 years and more recently. Uh, but again, first the news. We start nationally. President Biden's departure for his foreign tour is approaching and U.S. congressional Democrats are eager to reach an agreement on economic initiatives. The $3 trillion plan has stalled as Democrats iron out the details, focusing recently on a proposed billionaire's tax. Children as young as five will be eligible for their COVID-19 vaccine. Beginning next week, 28 million doses have been allocated nationally. The uh, State Department of the United States has begun issuing gender X U.S. passports, so that's exciting news. Uh, this week, Massachusetts Education Commissioner Jeff Riley extended the mask mandate in public schools through January 15, 2022. As the Nor'easter raged in the past few nights, uh, nearly half a million homes found themselves without power here in Massachusetts. Uh, as And similarly, uh, relatedly, I guess I would say, uh, a number of school districts, particularly on the South Coast, South Shore, and Cape Cod, were closed yesterday. Uh, no school for those uh, students. But things are getting better. The lights are coming back on, and folks are cleaning up, as you would expect. Trick-or-treating in Brookline has the thumbs up. It's been deemed safe, but please follow local health protocols, and that includes making sure that you don't substitute a costume mask for the appropriate uh, N95 or other tight fitting cloth mask when you are indoors and do try to avoid uh, significant indoor gatherings. And hey, make sure you wash your hands uh, before you get into that candy. So happy Halloween this weekend. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to cut over now right to that interview with John Harris from Climate Action Brookline. Thanks for watching Brookline Interactive Group. Three, two. And as promised on today's show, we've got Climate Action Brookline co-chair and town meeting member, John Harris. John, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you very much, Tommy. John, uh, some folks know about climate and some folks know about Brookline, but tell us a little bit about just what Climate Action Brookline is all about. Okay, uh, Climate Action Brookline is a citizen advocacy group. Uh, our intention, our purpose is to educate and influence voters and decision making regarding the climate crisis. And in particular, our activities are centered as our name indicates in the town of Brookline. So things that Brookline as a town, uh, Brookline as residents and Brookline residents as individuals can do to address the climate crisis. Um, we're kind of a, I'd almost say a mainstream uh, advocacy organization. It, we're not a civil disobedience type group. Uh, we definitely are working through conventional uh, political structures, I guess I would say. Um, we meet religiously on the second Monday of every month. That is our monthly public meeting. Uh, it is only bumped for major holidays. Um, and those issues really center on uh, each week. It's a different climate issue of concern. So, um, CAB is a, we look at CAB, we love to have any and everybody who's interested in the climate crisis uh, join CAB, get involved with CAB. It is a very good venue for you to, uh, you know, exercise your, to kind of work through your particular climate interests to try to find allies to work with you, uh, to publicize it. Um, we fully recognize that uh, that all of our campaigns work when we have leaders who have energy and ideas to pursue them. And we are constantly searching for leaders with, again, as I say, any and, and every climate related issue. And uh, let me just point out that uh, 
We know that there are a thousand climate concerns that people could have. We know that many people in recent years have gotten just kind of overwhelmed and depressed by how much needs to be done. Um, but we know also there are tons of solutions and that have been proposed and this particular book, Drawdown, which is attempting to not only stop, but uh, reverse uh, the climate crisis uh, by Paul Hawken, came out just three or four years ago, uh, is a excellent book. It has several dozen areas of concern that people can, can work on. And we know that everybody, valuable time and energy, that each person um, has to pick and choose which of these things you're going to do, and you're going to leave it to somebody else to do the ones you just don't have the time for. So maybe you could it would help by giving us a little bit of history about Climate Action Book Long. You've had a name change. You've been around, uh, frankly, quite a long time, uh, early, early in the movement. And uh, I know the viewers would love to hear a little bit more about uh, maybe where climate yeah, uh, Climate Action Brookline was founded in the year 2000, uh, 21 years ago. And uh, as a matter of fact, some of the founding people are still uh, on our board and still involved with CAB. Um, and uh, a couple of highlights are basically about 10 years later, I think it was about the year 2010, um, Climate Action Brookline was successful in the creation of a group called the Select Board Climate Action Committee, which is a... Um, a direct advisory group, a volunteer group as part of town government to advise the select board and actually others as well uh, on climate issues. Um, we also have had a huge success in uh, the creation of the sustainability director position, which is in the town planning department. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, another notable thing is what we called our Solarize program, where Climate Action Brookline would get maps uh, of houses in, uh, in town that were particularly appropriate to put solar panels on the roofs of, and would go and knock on doors and try to convince the residents of those houses to, uh, to put in solar panels. Um, in 2017, uh, Climate Action Brookline was successful in convincing uh, Brookline Town Meeting to sign the town on to the Paris Climate Agreement. We had heard that the, uh, uh, the then candidate for president of the United States was going to pull the United States out of Paris, and we thought that was a very bad idea. Um, and so uh, Brookline, almost unanimous positive vote by town meeting to sign us on. Um, and then pursuant to that, the very next year in 2018, uh, Paris asked all the signatories to come up with a comprehensive climate action plan. And uh, the Brookline uh, Planning Department in fact did that led by Maria Morelli of the planning department uh, in a very good for its time climate action plan. Um, uh, let's see, more recently, uh, CAB has had, Climate Action Brookline, we call ourselves CAB, by the way, uh, we have had a, uh, it's called the BGE campaign or Brookline, uh, Bro Brookline Green Electricity campaign to encourage people to, uh, to uh, switch their, uh, their home electricity uh, program to uh, all, to uh, um, to the town program and in particular to a high percentage, hopefully 100% of renewable sources for their electricity. Um, another highlight was last July, uh, where uh, basically several residents uh, uh, kind of toured their houses uh, online, it was a Zoom meeting, and showed us the weatherization and in particular the heat pumps and other, uh, you know, renewable uh, electrical, uh, uh, you know, heating systems, heating and cooling systems that they put in the house. And one of our uh, residents who uh, showed us around his house was the Honorable uh, Tommy Vitolo. Um, true story. True there story. you go. True story and very fun. So, um, and uh, by the way, on you can see the link of that. I think it's on our Climate Action Brookline website, which is climateactionbrookline.org. I believe. I hope you can uh, you can look at the uh, the video of that meeting. Uh, more recently, um, we had a hand in advocating for uh, geothermal. Um, 
uh, under the uh, the grounds of the Driscoll School. And currently, a couple of the major things we do every April, uh, we have for our monthly meeting, we have a candidates environmental forum. And that's been very, very good to have select board candidates, sometimes school committee and sometimes other town townwide offices uh, kind of try to convince us of their uh, climate uh, crisis bona fides. And then every May and every November, we have warrant article endorsement meetings. And we have one of those uh, meetings coming up on Monday, November 8 at uh, 5 p.m. That's a long list. Now, it seems to me uh, when I first got involved with the organization, it had a different name. Uh, it was Climate Change Action Brookline, but it's uh, it's now CAB. And so for folks who remember it as CCAB or Climate Change Action Brookline, we are talking about the same group, are we not? We are, definitely are. It was just decided that CAB, C-A-B was Climate Action Brookline. It's a little simpler, a little easier to remember. And nowadays, by the way, it's very helpful that we are CAB and that the uh, in-town government related group is called the Select Board Climate Action Committee or SBCAC. And that way we keep those two groups uh, separated in people's minds. Got hope. it. And they, they are a select board appointed uh, town government group. And you are an advocacy group who sure has a lot of folks uh, who may be town meeting members or otherwise involved in government, but you are wholly separate. Is that right? We are wholly separate and we are uh, what I like to call is open admission. Any Brookline resident who has an interest in and concern in the climate crisis, we would love to have you get involved with Climate Action Brookline. So you ran down a list of things uh, you've been involved in. Um, I'd like to drill in on a couple of them if I, if I can. One that has been going on for many years, I think you were not able to do it this past year due to COVID. Um, it started off as I think Climate Week. Then it became climate two weeks, and it's grown since then. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, and finally, uh, it reached the point uh, last several years where it was called climate spring. Uh, it was that way, basically, I think, until COVID hit. And uh, we will have to see. I mean, uh, remember, we're coming into winter now, uh, and let's see what happens in the coming spring. And uh, we, what basically what it was, was a whole series of events uh, that were centered on each night, a different aspect of the climate crisis. So uh, we would have speakers, we'd have movies, we'd have discussion groups, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we, we may, we may or may not this, this spring uh, organize things under that rubric. It's actually, a, Tommy, thank you very much for reminding me. It's a very good idea. Well, of course, uh, with the uncertainties around COVID, it's understandable that uh, we just know certainly some of the events were outdoors, but spring weather's, uh, well, uncertain. We went from really nice days in October to a nor'easter, uh, seemingly overnight. Tell us a little bit about the um, Brookline Green Electricity Program, a little bit more about the program and, um, you know, what, what, what CAB's interest is there and why uh, it remains energized about the, about the program. Okay, uh, basically, um, conventionally, since probably the uh, beginning of uh, the electrical grid, uh, the relationship of individuals to their the electric company in their area, and of course, it was a, uh, a uh, government controlled monopoly, it, it makes no sense to have more than one set of electrical wires going to any given street. So, um, so a single company would be uh, authorized by the state, uh, State Department of Public Utilities, um, and then uh, that body would be would be regulated by the state government, uh, that organization, um, that private corporation. Um, what BGE does is kind of, um, kind of, so what would happen is that each customer, in a sense, would be negotiating with the utility companies as an individual. What BGE does is two things. First of all, it allows uh, the, the group of customers, the, the vast majority of electrical customers in Brookline, to be represented, in this case, by the town, uh, who can advocate for advantageous prices, number one. And number two, a particular reason why environmentalists wanted to start the 
program, which we call Brookline Green Electricity, is that we uh, are lobbying again on the on the part of several thousand individuals at the town basis to keep on increasing the percentage of renewable sources for that electricity. So. Um, what has happened? Uh, we are in year two, I believe, or so of a three year contract, and there are multiple tiers of renewable that you can purchase. Um, and the default tier right now is about 30% renewable. Okay. Um, about a year from now, our new contract begins. And uh, well, first of all, CAB has been involved in two parts. We were involved in the last negotiation. And now more recently, uh, you may have seen the lawn signs up in town to encouraging people to sign on with BGE. Um, and we've been, uh, you know, even putting door handle door hangers on doors and speaking with our friends and things to increase the, the signups. Um, and uh, our interest at this point, our main interest is in getting involved in the negotiations for the next year's contract. Um, as I mentioned, the default of renewable was 30% in the, uh, in the current contract. We, lobbied for much higher than that, but we're told that uh, electrical suppliers would not agree to that um, on the grounds they felt uh, the higher tiers would be too expensive and, and they just could not get enough customers to, to make the business case for that. Um, here we are several years later and we've got uh, towns in the greater Boston area. Uh, there's, I think is Newton at 80% and I think Lexington has at 100% for its renewable default. And um, so we think, uh, and also there's, you know, many more, uh, you know, forest fires and floods, et cetera, you know, environmental disasters uh, around the United States. There's uh, the, the tenor uh, of public opinion and actually the awareness of utility companies and electrical suppliers has changed. So we hope that with some strong advocacy on our part, we can, uh, uh, we can bump up the default in the next contract. And that is going to be where our, our efforts uh, uh, focus on this year. And in Climate Action Brookline, it is Susan Martin, co-chair, newly elected co-chair Susan Martin, who will be leading that effort on behalf of Climate Action Brookline. And of course, in addition to a higher default, the other way in which uh, CAB can help move the town in a uh, renewable direction is to encourage individuals to opt up from the default to the higher threshold, which I know, John, you've done, I've done, um, to do, and uh, it's nice knowing that uh, your home is fully powered by renewables. Um, so, and yeah. Tommy, if we make the default 100%, then, um, then it's not really an opt-up effort on the part of climate activists in town. It's kind of, uh, you know, that's, that's the default. That's kind of, yeah. And uh, by the way, another advantage of uh, the BGE program altogether is that the town is continually vetting programs for quality control. Um, uh, I am still getting uh, mailings from private companies that are off also say they're offering green electricity this, green electricity that. Some of those companies may be fantastic, but we, we know that some of them are just really um, scams, I'd almost say. And it's very hard for any particular individual to know which is which. If you sign up with BGE, you know you have the town uh, kind of uh, advocating for you and double checking for quality control from our electrical suppliers. That's, that's right. And um, yeah, I think it's been, I think it's been a great program for the town. Really the town uh, was out ahead of the rest of the state on this and helped move the um, move the status quo over, right? Move the cutting edge, and I think the town should be proud of that. What uh, what are you working on now? What is currently uh, some of the things Cab is thinking about or planning on? Uh, what's what's Cab interested in these days? Okay, uh, very good question. Thank you. Um, you know, Cab, right now we're in the middle of kind of formulating our our priorities for the coming year or so, uh, and the reason we're doing that is a whole bunch of new things in the the climate space, as they say. Um, first is a recognition that uh, the issues are getting more complicated. Um, you know, it's no longer at the tree hugger stage. Um, 
Uh, it is now at the stage of, um, just to give one example, uh, if you look at a particular plot of ground, what's the best use of that, uh, that plot? Uh, do you want to build a bike path there or do you want to plant trees there? Uh, or do you want to build a building there? Um, and uh, you have to weigh your priorities. Uh, you have to weigh very often a number of very positive priorities to see which one is the optimum. Um, and uh, basically a very important part of that is, as well is that we are, everybody's getting better and better at kind of uh, measuring priorities, um, measuring amounts of greenhouse gases by various activities, uh, for example. Um, and those are helping us a great deal. Um, the Alan Leviton, who's a now retired engineer with Climate Action Brookline, um, is helping us. He's our, our kind of our data expert. And um, he was involved in uh, uh, greenhouse gas inventories that the town has done, uh, the last one in the year 2008. And um, he realized his numbers is that uh, in the town of Brookline, that uh, buildings uh, as of 2008 accounted for about 43% of the carbon footprint in Brookline, that transportation, which means uh, gas and diesel fuel uh, is about 28%, and then electricity generation and supply is about 25%. So those kinds of numbers are gonna help us set our priorities. Well, it sounds like you've been, you've been busy um, what about folks who want to put some of their time into these efforts? What, what would you say to folks who uh, have got a little time in there? Maybe they're energy experts. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're extroverts. Maybe they're introverts, right? Um, what would you say to folks who are interested in uh, getting involved in these efforts. Uh, we would love to have any and everybody get involved with Climate Action Brookline. Uh, and the easiest way to do that uh, uh, is, first of all, you, you one of your neighbors may be one of our board members. Uh, if not, basically just go to Climate Action Brookline, Brookline climateactionbrookline.org and go down to the lower page there and, and click on the link. And that will put you in touch with us. And then we will get in touch with you. And uh, the best way to get started, I think, is to begin to attend our, our second Monday monthly meetings. Um, we will see that you're there. Uh, we, will, we will note that you're there. Uh, and then we will, you can, again, you can try to get in touch with us for any further involvement, or we will get in touch with you. So, Is Climate Action Brookline currently uh, working on any Warrant articles or other town policy? Or are you really just sort of in between things at the moment? Uh, very good question. I did mention before that our, our November 8th monthly meeting is going to be a uh, warrant article endorsement meeting. There are about half a dozen, I think, uh, articles on the warrant that have environmental implications. And um, I've talked with two of the petitioners at this point. Uh, I've talked with three, actually, uh, people involved um, and uh, who have an interest in, in, in looking for, uh, for CAB's endorsement on that. So well, uh, ideally, what we do uh, at that meeting is that the petitioners themselves present their warrant article. Uh, and then there's a, a, a period of questions. Um, and then uh, we vote up or down. Uh, on that warrant article. Um, a major focus of ours right now in terms of uh, official town business is uh, the coming ARPA funding decision. And um, we actually just, uh, our CAB, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a core of our uh, board members who meet uh, as often as weekly for planning sessions. And uh, uh, we, yesterday, our yesterday's meeting uh, we discussed a great deal about what we would do for ARPA. So um, the idea that is farthest along is that um, there's a kind of a sub-branch of Climate Action Brookline called Climate is Everybody's Business uh, that was founded by people like David Gladstone of the uh, Chamber of Commerce and Susan Martin of Climate Action Brookline. And um, that group is working on a proposal to have ARPA funds fund a uh, a um, uh, an energy coach uh, position that would uh, advise uh, initially businesses uh, on how they can uh, you know behave more responsibly in terms of, of climate issues. So uh, other issues as well that we're kind of developing as time goes on. Um, 
because of ARPA, you know, the imminent deadlines, that is going to be our focus uh, at first. Uh, there are a few of us who are making noises about uh, getting involved with trying to get heat pumps uh, installed in, uh, you know, affordable housing or public in, in really public housing projects in Brookline. Um, we'll see if we can get that together. Lots, lots going on in town, lots going on with the climate. Uh, you know, really Climate Action Brookline has been doing well for so long. Uh, I know you've worked with some other groups uh, around town and at the state. Maybe just quickly give us a sense of some of the other groups that CAB partners with. Well, uh, Tommy, excellent question. Basically, we are. Uh, there are other groups like Mothers Out Front has a very uh, active branch in Brookline. Elders Climate Action as well. Uh, there's a group uh, uh, of environmentalists, uh, environmental club at the Brookline High School. Um, gee, uh, there's uh, the a group called Safe Routes to Schools um, that. Uh, you know, have climate implications, getting people out of, getting the kids out of fossil fuel school buses to get to and from school. What we're actually talking about, amongst other ideas, is the possibility in early next year of a, a, a community summit of Brookline-based environmental groups. Um, you know, we're, we're, there are all these groups during their, having their own focus, number one, and number two, there are People who kind of come out of the woodwork uh, constantly uh, with this this climate related idea, this climate related idea, and it's fantastic. We're really getting at the, at the point where uh, we we kind of should learn what each other is doing, uh, how we're doing it, uh, where each group can learn. Can we help, or is it best if we stay out of the way because we're doing other things? That kind of thing. So. Um, Again, at some point next year, hopefully in the first half of next year, the possibility of a community summit of Brookline environmental groups. Climate Action Brookline, uh, been busy for 20 years, and of course, there's so much more work to do. John Harris, co-chair, thank you for coming on Brookline Interactive Group on the TV on TV show. We're delighted to have you. And uh, as you mentioned earlier, we want to make sure folks know they can go to brooklineclimateaction.org to check out the website and get involved. John, uh, thanks for coming on the show. Tommy, just to correct very quickly, it's climateactionbrookline.org. Oh, I apologize. Climate, climate Action, Action Brookline. Brookline. That's the only way it'll work in the, in the, to or get to the website. The Google. Or use Google. The Google will always work. Yes. So, Tommy, many thanks. Good to talk with you. John, thanks for coming on the show. We'll see you soon.